Okay, we're going to go over multi-displacement maps in Maya. Uh, here we have a scene with a uh, polygonal column. Over here is just an area light with some uh, ray trace shadows. And here is a point light. First off, I want to show an example with the render really quick of a uh, diffuse spec and bump map on a basic cylinder. The only problem with this is that you are given away around the silhouette. Now I want to have these uh, little vents come out. So we're going to mess with displacement maps and they're not very expensive at all. What I have in the scene here in my outliner is three different pieces of displacement, three different meshes. First I got a column and then I took that column, duplicated it and smoothed out the edges. And then the third one I did was uh, a combined piece of geometry for those actual vents and extra little parts here and there. So three total meshes right on top of each other. And we're going to go ahead and bake out some displacement maps. So I'm going to go ahead and go to lighting, transfer maps. And we already created a displacement map and we're going to call that bake one JPEG. We got to make our target and our source. So I'm just going to grab a column and that's going to be our target. And then our first displacement map is the smooth edges and we'll say source. And coming down. Again, JPEG, and then we're going to save these as 1300 by 1300. And go ahead and bake. Alrighty, baked our first one out, which we baked to a folder. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and batch out the, uh, the other one. So I'm going to take my source and remove it and add my new source as the combined pieces of geometry. So again, these, this is just a duplicated mesh of our original with added pieces and combined. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and say add source. And what we want to do is um, with both of these on, I want to switch over to envelope. And I want to make sure that my envelope gets pushed out enough so that I at least get clear of uh, these little cylinders and so forth. So I want to be able to make sure they're included. So maybe a, a 4.7 looks good. And then we can just go back to mesh. Now let's go ahead and bake that one out. But this, before we do that, we've got to just change the uh, bake to 2 and say bake. Alrighty. Now that we've baked out two displacement maps, let's uh, head over into Photoshop. Here is the uh, 1300 by 1300 Photoshop file with a diffuse, a spec, and a bump map. What I want to do now is to bring in my displacement maps. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open up those files that were baked. So there's bake one and bake two. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these and put them into with a copy and a paste. And get rid of that one. And copy and paste. And we'll go ahead and name these for displace one and displace two. So these were the two baked ones. And then I added a third one, which was hand drawn through um, just blurring out and uh, using my marquee tools here, circles and rectangle, and just drawing on here and using the original diffuse map open under layers and so forth. So I have this separate layer here. And what's cool about when you blur white squares, it gives a nice fall off. So it gives a more organic feel to your geometry instead of having all the tessellation that you would need to have a nice round edge. You can have that in your displacement map. So these are just black and white dots and so forth. Now the problem with that is we need to work it from a 50% gray. So I'll go ahead and add a layer and call that 50% gray. And I'll go ahead and fill that with 50% gray. So there you go. So there's our first displacement map, second. In fact, I'm going to rename these and call that two and call that one. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and save these out separately as JPEGs. And now that we have them as JPEGs, uh, we're going to go ahead and back in our Maya scene here and we're going to open up our Hypershade and just graph out um, our network. And we're going to create a displacement network. So under displacement and create a displacement map node. And we're going to go ahead and create a file node. Grab that. And a multiplier node. Alrighty. 
And I'm going to go ahead and middle mouse drag the file into the multiplier node and say other. And say out alpha input 1x. Uh, I go into my network here uh, under the actual texture node. And under color balance, because we have to adjust for grayscale, uh, we'll turn on alpha's luminance and put negative 0.5 in the alpha offset. And we'll grab the multiplier node and we'll say duplicate shader network. So we get one more of those. And we'll do it again. Ed edit duplicate shader network, like so. And last but not least, we're going to have an added in node. Average added. And this will add by default, set to sum. Just middle mouse drag onto the plus sign, input 3, 3D0, you'll get a green line. Again, just middle mouse drag this one on, hit, input 3D1, and finally input 3D2. So you get three of these adding up, and we'll go ahead and middle mouse drag that onto and hit the other. So from the plus average added node to the displacement node, and we'll say output 3DX to displacement. And we can tell, when we look at the displacement node, it says a total displacement of three. One, two, three. And last but not least, we can just middle mouse drag this onto the blend displace, displacement map. And that'll connect to the actual shader group node. So there we go. One last thing to do, take your multiplier nodes and bring the second input twos to zero. This is going to turn them off. A multiplier node takes this number times this number. So if you want 1 times 2 equals 2, you get twice the effect. So if you want to overcrank your displacements, you can do that. So the first, these two are set to 0. This one over here is set to 1. And let's start plugging in these displacement maps. So let's go ahead and hit File. And go into C, Displacement, go to Textures. And then we'll jump onto col uh, Column underscore Displacement 1. Here's the three that we export it out. And this is just for those nice smooth edges. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and first go to input 0 to turn it off and just get a basic render. And I'm looking at the silhouette here to kind of feel this out. So nothing along the edges here. We can see that through our alpha. And we'll just go ahead and turn on that displacement map. So I'll set that to 1. And if I want, I can just do a uh, render region. And if we take a look, there's a difference there. This area was painted a little bit in, so it's kind of pushing in. So we got smooth edges, and we're pushing in. Now we can overcrank that by setting this to maybe a value of 3. So let's go ahead and render that out. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so the first one's in. Now let's move on to the second one. And this will be the uh, vents, and that's displacement 2. And let's go ahead and start that number up at, say, 2. Let's see, uh, input 2. So I'll go ahead and save that, render this out. All right, looking good. Again, uh, if we want to, we could overcrank this to something, say, 3. And this stuff works really well. It, it gives itself away when you get really close, but far enough distances it really gives an extra added effect. So we can see there's silhouette going on, and I think three is what we're going to stick with. And now let's go for the last one, which is going to be the one we hand drawn. And this one is going to be very it's a high contrast compared to these two, so we're going to be very careful with this one. So let's go ahead and set this to one. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Okay, we're getting a little bit of overshoot here from these little, these are actually little pieces that if we kind of look in the map itself, uh, little dots that are correlating. So we don't, we, we don't need to crank that up that high, so let's go to 0.25, see how that looks. Okay. So, that looks good. We're, we're not overkilling. We have a little bit of a push out there, so I think I'm going to resolve this with, say, a 3.2. And let's go ahead and pull back here. Let's go ahead and do a 640 by 480 render. Okay. So here is with displacement map and without displacement map. So that's just with the bump map. See, we have a more organic feel down here. Again, this is totally up to you. 
Um, like I said, this is good for making buildings, uh, you know, like skyscrapers with multiple windows. But um, the edge here, as far as details, can change depending on the feature displacement settings. And I have this mesh set for 4222. The bars usually stay together. But if I were to bring this down to, say, 6 and 3, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, And as you can see, uh, this is with uh, a low setting for feature displacement, sample rates, initial and extra. And then this is with uh, 53 to 26. So it does make a difference. Again, this stuff is meant for, for things that are very decently far away, where no one's going to creep up to the displacement map and see the, the, the little details. And, uh, and you're going to get banding. That's the only other uh, bad thing about uh, displacement maps is where your texture is. You're not, there's no UVs laid out here. Uh, this is just going to just band, as you can see, as far as the texture itself. Now, what if you want to do occlusion for something like this? Well, that's pretty easy. Because uh, most people will be like, well, I can't do occlusion for this because occlusion is just going to do the, the original mesh. So let's go ahead and look at our uh, network here and take a look in our render layers. I'll just go ahead and create a layer and I'll just grab everything and add that to that layer and make another layer and then I'll just grab the geometry. Uh, I really only need the first column. So this first layer, we'll call it diffuse and leave it as is. And then the second layer, we'll call it occlusion. Now, usually when you create an occlusion pass, uh, you just say right click presets occlusion. But that just assigns a surface shader attached to an MIB ambient occlusion node. But we have to manually create that. So to create that, I'm going to go under my uh, Maya nodes. I'm going to grab a surface shader. And I'll go ahead and rename that the occlusion node or whatever. And we'll go ahead and uh, create our own manually created ambient occlusion node. So all I have to do is go under mental ray and under the uh, texture, just find MIB inclusion. Little mouse drag that, say default. Uh, set its sample settings to say something like 32. Its max distance to something like. Six, And this is going to take this displacement node as well. So I'm going to grab this node and grab this node, holding down shift, and graph the input outputs so that I get my shader group node, which is right here. And I'm going to middle mouse drag this displacement map to the displacement map material so that this gets a displacement map as well. Not the bump map or anything like that, but just the displacement map. So now I just take this material and under my render layer, right click and say, assign existing material to occlusion node. So let's go ahead and render that out and see what we get. And we get what looks to be a very nasty render. Again, um, you'll see like a stair stepped effect going on here. And again, this has all, all to do with the uh, sample. Um, if you're far enough away, you won't notice this. You could uh, take this layer blur it a little bit in Photoshop and multiply it over the uh, diffuse pass. But the diffuse pass looks pretty good. And uh, again, it just has this more organic feel and really makes uh, environment stuff for reels look really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this and do one more render uh, at a little bit higher resolution. All right, looking really good. Um, in Photoshop, I just took the occlusion layer and uh, copied it on top and just put on multiply just to add that extra depth. Again, what's really cool about this is uh, you can actually keyframe animate the multiplier node to create animation of displacement on objects as well. So keep that in mind. So I just hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial and uh, thanks for listening.